Hello and welcome. This is Twitter Master Vedant Goswami. Today, again, we are showing one uh, game from Mikhail Tal, which was played uh, long back in 1949 when Tal was uh, still a junior. This was played in Riga, the capital of Latvia, in the junior championship final tournament. So, and uh, Tal's opponent is uh, Strelko. So, let us see. So e4, e6, and it's the French defense. So the basic thing that attracted me to this game and, you know, uh, encouraged me to annotate this game and comment on this game was that, you know, how a single pawn move can be a critical mistake. So uh, as we know, the pawns are the basic defensive features of the game. Every pawn controls two squares, particularly the central pawns. Only the corner pawns, the A and H pawns, they are slightly weaker in that they control only one square at a time. But all the other pawns, they do control two squares at a time. And then when they are moved forward, they lose control to some squares, which can then be occupied by enemy pieces. So we'll see in this game how the movement of a single central pawn landed black in so much trouble. So we'll see. Let us go. So nd2, d4, ne4, nd7, regular stuff. Both sides are developing. And Tal plays ng3. He doesn't want to simplify the game too soon. He wants to keep some pieces on the board. Black attacks the center with t5. White fortifies the center with t3. Pawn takes and knight into d4. Now, if white takes with this, this pawn is known as the IQP, the isolated queen pawn. It can be a weakness because it is not supported by any other pawn. And it can be attacked along the file also. So, not a particularly good thing to have. Okay, so... White takes nd4, avoiding the pawn weakness in the center. Black plays a6 and bishop d3. Pretty natural development. Developing the bishop in the center and pointing it towards the white black king where it will castle in the future. So knight c5, bishop c2. Now, uh, very important basic difference. Between the knight and the bishop is that, you know, bishop is a long range piece. Bishop can attack while itself being safe. So now bishop here, it is very far away from the black king side, but still it can attack. So it is important to keep the bishops if you want to keep your attacking chances alive. While the knights are very tricky, they can jump over pieces, but when they want to attack, they have to go near to the enemy. And that uh, also means that they also can come under attack. So basic difference between the knight and the bishop. Bishop is a long range piece. It can attack from a long distance while itself being safe. In this position, black decided to play e5, which looks like a very correct move because it is displacing uh, the white uh, centralized knight Okay, but the big problem it creates is that it weakens the f5 square. Now, the f5 square is no longer under control of the black pawn, and which means white has an opportunity to position one of his pieces on that square. And f5 is a very dangerous square if opponent's pieces are there because it is very close to the king. The king is within his striking distance. So, Tal immediately creates a pin on the pawn uh, and uh, black plays bishop d6 and now knight f5. Now, it is very important to appreciate this position because, you know, one pawn mistake, one particularly pawn mistake in the center can be so critical because it loses control of the key squares and allows opponent to bring they are pieces where they can threaten our position. So black castled, white continued with natural aggressive moves. Bishop g5. 
it is a developing move and it immediately creates further problems for black with a pin on the knight on f6. And uh, though I would like to play a move like bishop e7, preventing the pin, the problem is then the e5 pawn is unsupported. Okay, so already black is in a position with not so enviable choices and uh, it is difficult to fault him for the further game. Bishop c7 and now there are multiple moves. I can castle and uh, I can play rook d1, I can play nh5. Tal chooses to bring rook d1, which is always the best option, bringing new pieces into the game. So the rook occupies the only open file as of now while threatening the black queen. And uh, it is not so easy to find a place for the queen to move. So for example, if the queen moves away, white wins very simply with bishop takes, bishop takes and queen g4 followed by checkmate on g7. So this is not the end we want. So in the game, black chose to continue with knight d7. And white shows great maturity in conducting the attack by increasing the pressure with NH5. Now it is very interesting position to watch. Every of the white pieces which is developed is attacking. So this is one of the key properties, key attributes of strong players. They somehow find way to bring all their pieces into the game. And after the black move bishop, d6, white had to resign because after bishop f6, he's simply losing peace or the game because if the knight captures, uh, you end up losing the queen and if the pawn captures, you end up getting the same checkmate on g7. Okay, so a very interesting game, uh, particularly to understand the consequences of pawn movements, how a single pawn movement, uh, how a single pawn move can weaken the critical squares and allow opponent with great opportunities. So keep that in mind. Um, moving a pawn is a critical movement of the game. So really make sure that the pawn uh, you are moving has to be moved. Consider other uh, piece moves uh, and uh, Chess theory is basically pieces before the pawns. Always focus on piece move first. And only when you are really, really sure about, you know, a movement of a pawn, only then move it. Otherwise, it can be quite dangerous like we saw in this game. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this uh, amazing game by Mikhail Tal. And uh, mm, uh, do subscribe for uh, upcoming lessons. and. Thank you for watching.